This is Late Edition News at 10 with Ann Downley. Sports with Eric DiBerardinis. And meteorologist Joe Garbache. The city of Hazleton has hit a bump in the road when it comes to acquiring more land. Hazleton Mayor Joe Yanuzzi is speaking out today about what has transpired, and tonight it's our top story. Good evening. This is WYLN's Late Edition, Greater Hazleton's only local news broadcast for Thursday, February 5th, 2015. I'm Ann Gownley. The city of Hazleton now may or may not get the land from Sullivan Trail Partnership. WYLN's Gary Perna has the latest from Hazleton Mayor Joe Yanuzzi. 375 acres sit between an area of the Club 40 Road and Stockton Mountain Road, and the city of Hazleton was hoping to acquire that land. However, now that may not happen. Today, WYLN spoke with Hazleton Mayor Joe Yanuzzi about what may or may not happen with the land. Yanuzzi explains that of the 375 acres, 70 acres are in Hazleton, and the additional 305 are in Hazel Township. A group of local businessmen invested in the acreage years ago and wanted to transfer the land in hopes of boosting the city's tax base. Several months ago, a uh, Sullivan Trails organization um, contact, uh, contacted us about uh, accepting 275 acres of land that they wanted to donate to the city, and we said we would be interested. So they did some research, and we went back and forth in quite a few conversations, and then finally we received a letter from their attorney to um, put it on the agenda and accept it, and we did that. Uh, right before the meeting, uh, we were told that the uh, attorney wanted to take it off the agenda. We couldn't do that, so we said table it. And that's exactly what Hazleton City Council did last night. Mayor Yanuzzi also said that before any further discussions are made, the partners want to meet with Hazleton officials to talk. I don't know where it is right now. The situation of uh, giving us the land is probably in limbo right now. The land will be donated at no cost to the city. If the land was transferred, it would have increased the size of the city by nearly 10%. If the city does acquire the land, Mayor Yanuzzi says the city has several different ideas that could be looked at to be developed for 375 acres of land. Yesterday, W. Island also spoke with Hazel Township Supervisor Bill Gallagher, who said the township has yet to hear anything official from the city at this time. And Hazelton for W. Island's Late Edition, I'm Gary Perna. As we reported to you last night, Hazleton City Councilman Jeff Cassatt resigned from the Hazleton Joint Sewer Authority. Today we spoke with Mayor Joey Nuzzi about the move. Councilman Jeff Cassatt was chosen for the position on the Joint Sewer Authority by other members of council around a month ago. He explained to us last night after the city council meeting why he ultimately made the decision to leave the board. I, I did step down from the sewer authority. Um, there have been many questions lately where the third class city code has changed which allows members of city council to serve on the body. Um, I thought it was a good idea to step to us, take the seat and to get stuff accomplished. The decision did not reflect because of the mayor's statement about uh, his opinion on the Supreme Court case ruling. I just felt that it's easier to step away now, let everything sort itself out. And if, if the uh, opportunity arises again, we'll uh, revisit the issue later. We stopped by Mayor Joey Nuzzi's office to find out his reaction on Cassatt's resignation. The mayor recently sent out letters to council citing an opinion by the state Supreme Court on council appointments. That is not supposed to be illegal. They said that you can go on an authority, but you can't go on an authority that pays you. And the sewer authority pays. So I guess he checked with his attorney and he, he re resigned. The mayor believes that Cassatt blames him for the resignation, and now he knows he must make the decision on who will fill the position. It's my opinion, and I'm getting a solicitor's opinion, that I would be the one to make the appointment with the advice and consent of counsel. So if that seat's open, then I would be the one who would fill that position. I, I would appoint that position. Mayor Yanuzzi has to take the necessary steps to make the appointment. 
The seat will remain open for the meantime because of Cassatt's resignation. However, the Joint Solar Authority can still remain operational. In Hazleton for WYLN's Late Edition, I'm Julie Stefanovich. Making sure firefighters can find fire hydrants during the winter months and getting to the bottom of a problem with garbage. Top tonight's Hazleton City Authority meeting. Our Gary Perna was at the meeting and has the latest. The Hazleton City Authority is looking at adding flagging to their fire hydrants so firefighters can find them in the winter time when they're not dug out in those crucial minutes of a fire. Board member Nellis, uh, who's very active with the local fire departments, have asked that we research uh, some of the markers for the hydrants so that, especially during the winter months, when they're typically buried in snow, we could identify them as a safety factor. So we're at the first stage right now. We have some samples in, and uh, we're going to invite some of the chief in to look at them and, and move from that point. The authority has about 700 fire hydrants in the system and about 350 of them are in the city of Hazleton. Andrew said that they will be contacting the fire chiefs from the city of Hazleton, West Hazleton and Hazel Township to get feedback about what type of flagging to put up. The board also got an update from the garbage collector for the city after they received complaints about garbage and recycling not being picked up. We've been back and forth with our new hauler. Uh, it's February, so they've been one month in. Uh, a, little, a few glitches that we've been ironing out. We were happy to see the, uh, Mr. Kreiser come up, uh, Kreitzer, and we talked to him about some of our concerns and how things are going. Uh, we also want to make sure that we alert the public that uh, if there is a delay in collecting or a cancellation, that we're going to try and alert the public to keep their garbage out one more day so that uh, we don't have garbage bags out being hit by plow trucks or just being blown up. Banks. The HCA is also working on their meter project. The authority has about 5,000 new meters put in place, but they still have many more to go. Yeah, we got the easy ones first. Now we're at the point where they're door-to-door -door and putting out memos uh, for customers to call in so that we can schedule to get the meters in uh, in, in a very timely fashion. So uh, the easy ones are taken care of. Uh, we're happy with that, and now we're at uh, some of the more difficult ones. So they put out uh, door tags and uh, letters went out. Yeah. We hope that the public will respond. If a note was left at your house from the authority, you're asked to contact them as soon as possible. Contact and schedule us and we'll be out uh, trying to meet you know, their schedule. We know that a lot of people are working, so we'll try to meet their, their schedule. The next HCA meeting is set for February 12th at 6.30. In Hazleton for WYLN's Late Edition, I'm Gary Perna. Thank you, Gary. A Wednesday night shooting has left two university students injured. One is in critical condition. Two suspects broke, in, broke into an apartment around 10 p.m. on Fetterman Avenue and shot the students. Police recovered a gun that they believed was used in the incident. One of the victims was shot in the arm and was taken to a hospital in Bloomsburg. The other victim was taken to Geisinger Medical Center, where he is in critical condition. Police believe that the suspects had a reason for breaking into the apartment and that it was not a random act of violence. The shooting is still under investigation. If anyone has information about this incident, they are asked to contact the Bloomsburg Police Department at 570-784-4155. Police in Wilkesbury say the CVS pharmacy on South Main Street was robbed just after 8.30 last night. An unidentified black male wearing a black coat, dark jeans with a hood covering his face, approached an employee and advised him to go behind the registers and empty all the cash drawers or, quote, I will bang you, unquote. During the exchange, the suspect kept his right hand in his pocket. After taking the cash, the suspect fled the store on foot. Employees told police that he ha may have taken several hundred dollars. The suspect is believed to be in his late 30s to mid 40s with possibly a mustache or goatee style beard. Anyone with information is asked to call police in Wilkesbury at 570-826-8106. State police in Wyoming have released surveillance photos of two women they say were using a credit card obtained in the name of another person. According to police, these women were used the credit card to make multiple purchases from three separate stores in the Wyoming Valley Mall, totaling $750. Police say the fraudulent transactions took place on December 30th of 2014. Anyone with information on this incident or if you can identify these two women, you are asked to call state police at Wyoming at 5 seven zero six seven nine two one four six 
While the prosecution rested its case yesterday in the Hugo Zelensky trial, the defense began its proceedings this morning. Zelensky's brother Ronald and sister Brooke were called to the stand during the 11th day of the trial. The defense team wanted to show that there was a reasonable explanation that work was being done at Zelensky's house in Kingston Township. Brooke stated that she would frequently visit the house at the time of the murders and would ride ATVs, swim, and explore the woods freely. Zelensky's former neighbor, Matt Hufford, also testified that he helped Zelensky with major renovations at the property during May of 2002. During cross-examination, Assistant District Attorney Jared Ferentino played a taped conversation between Zelensky and Ronald where Zelensky was heard denying the allegations. Earlier in the trial, prosecutors offered witness testimony stating that Zelensky warned them to stay away from the area where the bodies were found. Missouri County is looking at having a lawsuit filed over a dispatching error and a fatal fire thrown out. The county is saying that there was no reason that the woman killed couldn't have left the building when the dispatcher ordered an evacuation. 52-year-old Michelle Zoch died on May 15th during a fire at her home on Main Street in Mokinaqua section of Cunningham Township. 911 dispatchers sent emergency crews to a location nearly 15 miles away. Zoch family filed the complaint back in November alleging that the call taker should have known that Makanakwa was in Cunningham Township, not in Cunningham Borough. On Tuesday, Luzerne County filed a brief seeking to have the suit dismissed because they believe Zoch did not follow the dispatcher's orders to leave the home. Two 911 employees were suspended without pay for the dispatch, and one of them was fired in June of last year. Rest Haven, a Schuylkill County-owned nursing home, will be sold to Nationwide Healthcare Services in Brick, New Jersey. The Schuylkill County commissioners will sell Rest Haven for $12.2 million. Nationwide also owns another nursing center in Schuylkill County. Nationwide will offer jobs to the 140 employees at Rest Haven. The building was built in 1912 and has 142 beds. According to county commissioners, the nursing home was costing the county too much money and that's what drove them to sell it. The sale is expected to be finalized in a few months. The Downtown Hazleton Alliance for Progress has made a lot of progress over the past year with trying to bring new life to Downtown Hazleton. This week on Topic A, Gary Perna is joined by the Executive Director of the Downtown Hazleton Alliance for Progress, Krista Schneider, to talk about what you can expect in the coming months for the Alliance core focus of, of all the improvements right now, anyway, are um, right in the core, mm -hmm. uh, core of the downtown. Um, you know, mostly between Laurel and Wyoming. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you have the, the Marco building, the, the old Traders Bank building, which is now currently under renovation. Mm -hmm. You have the two, um, and these are all the, the DHD projects, the two uh, um, pedestrian bridges that okay. are being built to connect the two buildings, and the parking garage. The parking garage is under renovation with, you know, with city funding from that. Um, and then you have the HMB Bank building that's mm -hmm. going to be renovated for you know um, nice commercial office space. So building on that, you know, is where we're trying to create this core of um, of activity. And so you know, there's a lot of vacant properties on that block, uh, and so that's that's been the focus for this first kind of first priority mm -hmm. uh, implementation uh, of of. Of projects, but that's not to say that there aren't plans for right. improvements to Wyoming Street and uh, other other areas throughout the downtown as well. This topic A will air for the first time this Friday at 5 p.m. and replay many times throughout the weekend here and only here on WYLN. Tonight, more details on what WYLN News has in store for you this February. As we've mentioned before, it has been our pleasure at WYLN to bring you the area's best local news coverage, local sports, and in-depth weather reports. A change is coming right around Valentine's Day to show you, our viewers, that we've taken your suggestions to heart. Beginning on February 16th, WYLN will be bringing you more of what you've been asking for. Stay tuned next Monday for all of the details leading up to February 16th. 16th only on WYLN. And that is a look at tonight's top stories. Coming up tonight in sports, Eric DeBaradinas is in with a look at some basketball highlights from around our area. But first, let's head outside to the Bad Rock Gardens Weather Center with Chief Meteorologist Joe Garbachik. Joe, there were some delays for many area school districts in our viewing area, but as the day went on, the sun finally came out. What can we expect weather-wise heading into the weekend? 
Well, we're going to be dealing with some cold temperatures once again through tonight. Right now, many areas, temperatures are in the single digits, and with the winds, it's actually feeling like temperatures are below zero. That's why a lot of the schools, most of the schools, I think, heading into tomorrow morning will be on a delay because it is going to be just downright cold with those temperatures and winds when you walk outside in the early morning hours. But we don't have to worry about any precipitation right now. It's uh, dry throughout the WYLN viewing area, and I think we'll stay dry as we head through the overnight hours. But like I said, it is just going to be downright cold. We're going to be looking at temperatures feeling like it's minus 10, minus 15 or so below zero as we head through tonight and as we head into tomorrow morning. So bundle up if you have to be outside and always wear the hat and gloves. We'll talk about that seven-day forecast. It also includes the chance of yet another storm to impact our area as we head into the weekend. All details coming up next. Why should you choose Penn State Hazleton? We have new scholarship money. There's no application fee. When you visit campus. Opportunities to do research. Students are scoring internships all over the country. You can start here and finish here. Or at another Penn State campus. We have fun. We have the Lion. Penn State is ranked number one by corporate recruiters. We have the largest alumni network in the world. It's your time. Penn State. Penn State lives here. Check us out at psu.edu slash visit Hazleton. kids, I'm home. Dad, it's cold in here. Oh, it's not cold in here, it's warm in here. Matter of fact, I'm going to turn this down because i got to save money for tax preparation. On Staves, your tax partner, giving free advice year-round. 310 South Church Street in Hazleton. Call them at 570-861-8297. Don't stress, pay less. Tune in each week to WYLN TV 35 to watch the number one Hazleton-based broadcast and television talk show, The Storm, hosted by Tiffany Cloud. Candidates, politicians, community leaders, and more appear on The Storm when they want to be heard. New shows air Wednesdays at 8 p.m. and these additional air times. Only on WYLN TV 35, we're your local network. A winning smile. It's not the secret to success, but it sure helps. Protect your smile by visiting Dr. Weiss for complete dental services. Dr. Weiss offers a full-service denture laboratory on-premises, offering dentures in one day. Three dentists, four hygienists, and a team of caring technicians and assistants specializing in quality dentures and repairs, complete general dentistry, extractions, cleaning, and caps. Dr. Weiss, where you can have new dentures in one day. All Care Home Care. The health care that you need in the comfort and privacy of your own home. At All Care Home Care, our caring and compassionate staff of skilled nurses, occupational speech, physical therapists, dietitian, social worker, and home health aides will give you the professional care you need. Call 459-3002. With All Care Home Care, you will feel so much better and be able to do so much more. Remember, it's still your choice for your care. Call us and we'll be there. This February, you asked for it. Now we're sharing the love. News, weather, sports, and more. WYLN News, giving you what you want, when you want it. We have some bitterly cold wind chills to deal with through the overnight hours and you know this cold weather is really not going to go away anytime soon. We'll see some days where we get a little bit milder in terms of temperatures but then it gets cold once again. We continue to be in this cold trench of air if you will across the entire northeast and brisk cold conditions is what we've experienced today and tomorrow still going to be 
pretty cold. Of course, we just recently got a little bit of that uh, light snow that came through our area. And again, those systems that come through quick moving, don't pack much of a punch, usually on average one, two, occasionally three inches of snow, but just enough to cause some problems out there on the highways, especially when it's this cold. Live 35 Skycast Doppler, occasionally you see something funky like this. If you like purple, this is your radar, but I'll tell you right now, there's nothing showing up at all across our area, just maybe a few flurries. Two degrees, our live Lehigh tire conditions outside our station in Hazleton, and it's feeling like it's about minus five when you walk outside, and when those winds even pick up more, it's feeling like it's minus 10 or so degrees walking outdoors. Here's a look at some of these low temperatures. These are 24-hour low temperatures, and these numbers will fall between now and uh, even midnight, and they will be the brand new low temperatures because those numbers continue to fall. Look at these numbers. You say, hey, that's pretty warm today. No, that was yesterday at this time. That's a 24-hour high temperature. Since then, it's been all downhill. There's a look at those winds, 5, 10, 15 miles per hour, and that, of course, in many areas, making it feel like it's below zero. Nine now in New Angola, eight in Berwick, 10 in Bloomsburg, and nine degrees in Danville. Satellites and radar, I don't know how much going on, nothing really. Across the Northeast, we continue to be quiet. We'll stay quiet through tonight, except for some of those dangerously cold wind chills through the overnight hours and early tomorrow morning. Next system, the potential of the next system, I should say, won't impact our area till later Sunday. And depending upon what happens, we can be looking at a storm system later Sunday, Sunday night, and possibly into Monday. It could give us some snow. It could give us uh, a little bit of some sleet. It could give us a little bit of some freezing rain as well. A little bit of a mixture and a mixed bag of precipitation before all is said and done. Numbers tonight, these are just temperature values. Single digits. Some areas could get below zero. However, when you combine the actual winds with the actual air temperatures, here's what it's going to be feeling like through tonight. Minus 5, minus 10 degrees, waking up tomorrow morning, very cold, bundle up, wear the gloves, wear the hat, of course, and dress in layers. And then a little bit of a gradual, milder trend then as we start going into our Saturday. Summarizing tomorrow, cold, still cold. Temperatures below where we should be for this time of year. Here's a look at the extended forecast, and in it comes the potential of yet a storm system. Now, before we talk about that, we talk about tomorrow getting only up to 15 degrees and 10 for tomorrow night. A few snow showers for Saturday, about 28. Sunday and Monday, bears watching at this point in time. Could be looking at a, a wintry mix before all is said and done. However, some of the latest models, in fact, just taking a look at them, some of the newest data just coming in right now, that system may be a little further toward the north and east, which means it goes a little bit further away from us, which means we won't see as much precipitation. But, you know, things can change quite rapidly. I'll inform you about the new details tomorrow. And then Tuesday and Wednesday of next week, still cold, and we're just not going to get out of those 20s even as we progress through next week. We'll have more late edition coming up after these commercial messages. Now Hazel Park Spring Water is proud to announce that they are the official water of the WION Sports Crew and available for home delivery through JW Wargo Spring Water Delivery. Since 1915, the Chrysler family has been serving the area with quality meats. The tradition continues today with five generations at Hazel Park Quality Meats, 260 Washington Avenue, West Hazleton, and Reading Specialty Meats, located at 216 East 4th Street in Berwick. At Cuck's Turkey Farm, we are family owned and operated for over 45 years, and we consistently strive to produce premium poultry. We offer the finest all-natural country poultry, antibiotic-free, all vegetarian fed with superior white meat yield and exceptional flavor. So we invite you to experience the unique natural taste of our poultry for your enjoyment and your health. Give us a call or stop in today. During these changing times, is your insurance program up to date? 
I'm local real estate agent Gary McNeilis. I invite you to come into our office or give us a call. We'll help you be sure that you have the proper coverage to take care of all your family's needs at a price you can afford. Now more than ever, you need to be in good hands to protect everything that's important to you. Our team of insurance professionals and I will be honored to serve you. Are you in good hands? Ah, it's a sweet time at Victoria's Candies, and Victoria's has a sweet pre-Valentine sale for you. Order your chocolate-covered strawberries before February 10th and get 20% off. Regularly $18.95, now $15.20 a pound. Also select chocolate-filled hearts are on sale for 20% off through February 10th. 51 North Laurel Street, Laurel Mall, 22nd Street Plaza. Victoria's Candies, quality since 1934. Enjoy the great outdoors at the Whitetail Preserve Shooting Ranges, Trap, Skeet, and Sporting Place course. No waiting and no lines. First time shooting? Whitetail Preserve employs certified instructors to help you get the most out of your experience. Hungry? The restaurant at Whitetail has a great menu to satisfy and offers catering for all occasions. Whitetail Preserve Shooting Range, approximately 13 miles west of Hazleton and just one hour from Allentown, Reading, and the Delaware Water Gap. 118 Boulevard Road, just off the Rockland Road, near Rockland, 384-2314. Get your green on and join us for the Wilkes-Barre St. Patrick's Day Parade, Sunday, March 15th. Parade coverage starts at 2 p.m. live on WYLN TV 35. Thousands of spectators, vintage vehicles, local talent, floats, marching bands, and more. The Wilkes-Barre St. Patrick's Day Parade, Sunday, March 15th. Parade coverage starts at 2 p.m. on WYLN TV 35. We're your local network. Joe Gavio knew that his Hazleton girls would have another shot at Pittston. After suffering an 11-point home loss to the Lady Patriots in January, the Lady Cougars with a chance for redemption tonight. Tied atop the Division I of the Wyoming Valley Conference, Lady Cougars and Lady Patriots each with one loss and each aiming for the edge in the standings. Hazleton hot from the start. Kendra File rocking the double zero to the cup. She had 21 on the night. Then Lexi Wolk skyscraping with a shot off the glass and in. Lady Cougars with the first nine points of the game, but Lady Patriots with some quick passing to inch back in it. Alexa Noon from deep. Next, Liz Valeski, who has been on fire lately, throws the corner three, but the Cougars relentless in this one. File again here from the top of the key, and Hazleton wins big 62 to 40, and they're in sole possession of first place. More from Division One. Berwick is coming off a big win against Pittston in overtime. They're at Crestwood tonight, close throughout most of the first half, but Lady Comets with a run towards the end. Off and running, Marley Dillon uses the backboard for two points. Next though, Gabby Kishpaw from downtown, and she brings the Lady Dogs within four. But Maddie Ritzik, too much. She gets the pass from the high post and finishes for two of her game high 20. Plus with up 24 to 16 at the half and win 49 to 43. And senior night for Alexis Lewis and Holy Redeemer as they host Hanover. Great start for the Lady Royals and Lewis. Off the tip and just five seconds into the game, the All-State selection with the short jumper from the baseline. As Don Hooper doing her best to keep the Lady Hawkeyes close, drills the step back three and Hanover down three. More from Lewis though, the steal and she glides in for the lefty layup. Then again, number 33 with a jumper from the paint. That's good, but a scary moment when Lewis goes down with an injury. She would be helped off the court and head to the locker room. Score in this one has not been reported yet, but hopefully Lewis is okay. It was the Pittston and Hazleton girls tonight, tomorrow on WIL on the Hazleton boys host Pittston area in a Wyoming Valley Conference Division I showdown right here on WYLN. The Cougars will enter 15 and 4, the Patriots 7 and 9. During their first matchup in Yatesville, it was visiting Hazleton, bringing a 30-point victory, paced by 13 from senior Zach Sukoski. Cougars averaging 65 a game on the season, but that number slightly inflated.
played it after playing in seven overtime frames. Hazleton spreads the ball well, but Pittston's main task would be stopping junior Body Pernudis, who is averaging 17 points a game. The Cougars' main goal will be containing Tyler McGarry, who was the size to play in the block, but also that step-out ability from three. McGarry averaging 20 points a game this season, good for 40% of the Patriots' production. The Cougars with a ton of motivation. If they win out in Crestwood matches, the teams will meet for a third time to determine the conference champion. Later in sports, hear from three high school teammates that will play together for the next four years. But next, and we'll be back with a recap of today's news. Sunday night on WYLN from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. for hard-hitting, high-flying, non-stop action as only Pennsylvania Premier Wrestling High Voltage can bring you. That's Pennsylvania Premier Wrestling every Sunday night on WYLN. I'll see you in the ring. Watch Wellness through Physical Therapy with Ting O of Hazleton Physical Therapy and let Ting and his talented team guide you on your journey to wellness. Only on WYLN. If you haven't found the perfect fishing getaway, you haven't been to Captain's Cove. Located on Henderson Harbor in upstate New York, Captain's Cove offers a variety of accommodations to please just about anyone. The motel, also located on the harbor, offers a magnificent view. Enjoy free morning coffee, air-conditioned rooms, cable TV, and HBO. The cottage can accommodate up to eight people with three bedrooms, a complete kitchen, washer-dryer, two full baths, air conditioning, an outside grill, and picnic table. Call us today for rates and information at 1-800-824-FISH. WILN TV 35, first in live sports. Join Marty Burns, Joe DeMelfi, and the entire WILN sports team as we bring you the best in live local sports. WILN TV 35, the event, not just the highlights. Winter Sports on WILN is brought to you by Lehigh Valley Health Network, Express Care, located in the Hazleton Shopping Center. The city of Hazleton now may or may not get the land from Sullivan Trail Partnership. WYLN's Gary Perna has the latest from Hazleton Mayor Joe Yanuzzi. 375 acres sit between an area of the Club 40 Road and Stockton Mountain Road, and the city of Hazleton was hoping to acquire that land. However, now that may not happen. Today, WYLN spoke with Hazleton Mayor Joe Yanuzzi about what may or may not happen with the land. Yanuzzi explains that of the 375 acres, 70 acres are in Hazleton, and the additional 305 are in Hazel Township. A group of local businessmen invested in the acreage years ago and wanted to transfer the land in hopes of boosting the city's tax base. Several months ago, a uh, Sullivan Trails organization um, contact, uh, contacted us about uh, accepting 375 acres of land that they wanted to donate to the city, and we said we would be interested. So they did some research, and we went back and forth in quite a few conversations, and then finally we received a letter from their attorney to um, put it on the agenda and accept it, and we did that. Uh, right before the meeting, uh, we were told that the uh, attorney wanted to take it off the agenda. We couldn't do that, so we said table it. And that's exactly what Hazleton City Council did last night. Mayor Yanuzzi also said that before any further discussions are made, the partners want to meet with Hazleton officials to talk. I don't know where it is right now. The situation of uh, giving us the land is probably in limbo right now. The land will be donated at no cost to the city. 
If the land was transferred, it would have increased the size of the city by nearly 10%. If the city does acquire the land, Mayor Yanuzi says the city has several different ideas that could be looked at to be developed for 375 acres of land. Yesterday, W. Weiland also spoke with Hazel Township Supervisor Bill Gallagher, who said the township has yet to hear anything official from the city at this time. And Hazelton, for W. Weiland's late edition, I'm Gary Perna. As we reported to you Tuesday night, Hazleton City Councilman Jeff Cassatt resigned from the Hazleton Joint Sewer Authority. Today we spoke with Mayor Joey Nuzzi about the resignation. Councilman Jeff Cassatt was chosen for the position on the Joint Sewer Authority by other members of council around a month ago. He explained to us last night after the City Council meeting why he ultimately made the decision to leave the board. I, I did step down from the th sewer authority. Um, there have been many questions lately where the third class city code has changed which allows members of city council to serve on the body. Um, I thought it was a good idea to step to take the seat and to get stuff accomplished. The decision did not reflect because of the mayor's statement about uh, his opinion on that Supreme Court case ruling. I just felt that it's easier to step away now, let everything sort itself out. Out. And if, if the uh, opportunity arises again, we'll uh, revisit the issue later. We stopped by Mayor Joey Nuzzi's office to find out his reaction on Cassatt's resignation. The mayor recently sent out letters to his council citing an opinion by the state Supreme Court on council appointments. That is not supposed to be illegal. They said that you can go on an authority, but you can't go on an authority that pays you. And the sewer authority pays. So I guess he checked with his attorney and he, he re resigned. The mayor believes that Cassatt blames him for the resignation, and now you he must make the decision on who will fill the position. It's my opinion, and I'm getting a solicitor's opinion, that I would be the one to make the appointment with advice and consent of counsel. So if that seat's open, then I would be the one who would fill that position. I, I would appoint to that position. Mayor Yanuzi has to take the necessary steps to make the appointment. The seat will remain open for the meantime because of Cassatt's resignation. However, the Joint Sewer Authority can still remain operational. Ian Hazelton for WYLN's Late Edition. I'm Julie Stefanovich. Making sure firefighters can find fire hydrants during the winter months and getting to the bottom of a problem with garbage. Top tonight's Hazleton City Authority meeting. Our Gary Perna was at the meeting and has the latest. The Hazleton City Authority is looking at adding flagging to their fire hydrants so firefighters can find them in the winter time when they're not dug out in those crucial minutes of a fire. Board member Nellis, uh, who's very active with the local fire departments, had asked that we research uh, some of the markers for the hydrants so that, especially during the winter months, when they're typically buried in snow, we could identify them as a safety factor. So we're at the first stage right now. We have some samples in, and uh, we're going to invite some of the chiefs in to look at them and, and move from that point. The authority has about 700 fire hydrants in the system and about 350 of them are in the city of Hazleton. Andrew said that they will be contacting the fire chiefs from the city of Hazleton, West Hazleton and Hazel Township to get feedback about what type of flagging to put up. The board also got an update from the garbage collector for the city after they received complaints about garbage and recycling not being picked up. We've been back and forth with our new hauler. Uh, it's February, so they've been one month in. Uh, a, little, a few glitches that we've been ironing out. We were happy to see the, uh, Mr. Kreiser come up, uh, Kreitzer, and we talked to him about some of our concerns and how things are going. Uh, we also want to make sure that we alert the public that uh, if there is a delay in collecting or a cancellation, that we're going to try and alert the public to keep their garbage out one more day so that uh, we don't have garbage bags out being hit by plow trucks or just being blown up banks. The HCA is also working on their meter project. The authority has about 5,000 new meters put in place, but they still have many more to go. Yeah, we got the easy ones first. Now we're at the point where they're door-to-door -door and putting out memos uh, for customers to call in so that we can schedule to get the meters in uh, in, in a very timely fashion. So uh, the easy ones are taken care of. Uh, we're happy with that, and now we're at uh, some of the more difficult ones. So they put out uh, door tags and uh, letters 
went out. Yeah. We hope that the public will respond. If a note was left at your house from the authority, you're asked to contact them as soon as possible. Contact and schedule us, and we'll be out uh, trying to meet the, you know their schedule. We know that a lot of people are working, so we'll try to meet their their schedule. The next HCA meeting is set for February 12th at 6:30. In Hazelton for WYLN's late edition, I'm Gary Perna. A Wednesday night shooting has left two university students injured. One is in critical condition. Two suspects broke into an apartment around 10 p.m. on Fetterman Avenue and shot the students. Police recovered a gun that they believed was used in the incident. One of the victims was shot in the arm and was taken to a hospital in Bloomsburg. The other victim was taken to Geisinger Medical Center where he is in critical condition. Police believe that the suspects had a reason for breaking into the apartment and that it was not a random act of violence. The shooting is still under investigation. If anyone has information about this incident, they are asked to contact the Bloomsburg Police Department at 570-784-4155. Police in Wilkesbury say the CVS pharmacy on South Main Street was robbed just after 8.30 last night. An unidentified black male wearing a black coat, dark jeans, with a hood covering his face, approached an employee and advised him to go behind the registers and empty all the cash drawers or, quote, I will bang you, unquote. During the exchange, the suspect kept his right hand in his pocket. After taking the cash, the suspect fled the store on foot. Employees told police that he may have taken in several hundred dollars. The suspect is believed to be in his late 30s to mid 40s with possibly a mustache or goatee styled beard. Anyone with information is asked to call police in Wilkesbury at 570-826-8106. State police in Wyoming have released surveillance photos of two women they say were using a credit card obtained in the name of another person. According to police, these women used the credit card to make multiple purchases from three separate stores in the Wyoming Valley Mall, totaling $750. Police say the fraudulent transactions took place on December 30th of 2014. Anyone with information on this incident or if you can identify these two women, you are asked to call state police at Wyoming at 570-679-2146. While the prosecution rested its case yesterday in the Hugo Zelensky trial, the defense began its proceedings this morning. Zelensky's brother Ronald and sister Brooke were called to the stand during the 11th day of the trial. The defense team wanted to show that there was a reasonable explanation that work was being done at Zelensky's house in Kingston Township. Brooke stated that she would frequently visit the house at the time of the murders and would ride ATVs, swim, and explore the woods freely. Zelensky's former neighbor, Matt Hufford, also testified that he helped Zelensky with major renovations at the property during May of 2002. During cross-examination, Assistant District Attorney Jarrett Farantino played a taped conversation between Zelensky and Ronald, where Zelensky was heard denying the allegations. The court earlier in the trial, prosecutors offered witness testimony stating that Zelensky warned them to stay away from the area where the bodies were found. Luzerne County is looking at having a lawsuit filed over a dispatching error in a fatal fire thrown out. The county is saying that there was no reason that the woman killed couldn't have left the building when the dispatcher ordered an evacuation. 52-year-old Michelle Doach died on May 15th during a fire at her home on Main Street in Makwanakwa section of Cunningham Township. 911 dispatchers sent emergency crews to a location nearly 15 miles away. The Zoch family filed the complaint back in November alleging that the call taker should have known that Makwanakwa was in Cunningham Township not coming a borough. On Tuesday, Luzerne County filed a brief seeking to have the suit dismissed because they believe Zosh did not follow the dispatcher's orders to leave the home. Two 911 employees were suspended without pay for the dispatch and one was fired in June of last year. Rest Haven, a Schuylkill County-owned nursing home, will so be sold to Nationwide Healthcare Services in Brick, New Jersey. The Schuylkill County Commissioners will sell Rest Haven for $12.2 million. Nationwide also owns another nursing center in Schuylkill County. Nationwide will offer jobs to the 140 employees at Rest Haven. The building was built in 1912 and has 142 beds. According to county commissioners, the nursing home was costing the county too much money and that's what drove them to sell it. The sale is expected to be finalized in a few months. 
The downtown Hazleton Alliance for Progress has made a lot of progress over the past year with trying to bring new life to downtown Hazleton. This week on Topic A, Gary Perna is joined by the Executive Director of the, Hazel of the Downtown Hazleton Alliance for Progress, Krista Schneider, to talk about what you can expect in the coming months from the Alliance. Core focus of, of all the improvements right now, anyway, are um, right in the core, mm -hmm. uh, core of the downtown. Um, you know, mostly between Laurel and Wyoming. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you have the, the Marco building, the, the old Traders Bank building, which is now currently under renovation. Mm -hmm. You have the two, um, and these are all the, the DHD projects, the two uh, um, pedestrian bridges that okay. are being built to connect the two buildings and the parking garage. The parking garage is under renovation with, you know, with city funding from that. Um, and then you have the HMB Bank building that's mm -hmm. going to be renovated for you know um, nice commercial office space. So building on that, you know, is where we're trying to create this core of um, of activity. And so you know, there's a lot of vacant properties on that block, uh, and so that's that's been the focus for this first kind of first priority mm -hmm. uh, implementation uh, of of. Of projects, but that's not to say that there aren't plans for right. improvements to Wyoming Street and uh, other other areas throughout the downtown as well. This topic A will air for the first time this Friday at 5 p.m. and replay many times throughout the weekend here and only here on WYLN. Tonight, more details on what WYLN News has in store for you this February. As we've mentioned before, it has been our pleasure at WYLN to bring you the area's best local news coverage, local sports, and in-depth weather reports. A change is coming right around Valentine's Day to show you, our viewers, that we've taken your suggestions to heart. Beginning on February 16th, WYLN will be bringing you more of what you've been asking for. Stay tuned on Monday for all of the details leading up to February 16th, only on WYLN. And that is a look at tonight's top stories. Coming up next, yesterday was National Signing Day, and a trio of local high school football stars are headed off to the same college to pursue their dreams together. But first, let's get another quick look at our forecast with Chief Meteorologist Joe Garbachik, who's outside again with a look at our forecast. And Joe, please don't say the word snow. I gotta say something, of course, but you know what? I wish I could not say the word snow. We do have some snow, maybe a mixture to talk about in our forecast, but right now it is just downright cold when you combine temperatures with winds. Here's a look at what it's feeling like. The wind chill values throughout the state of Pennsylvania is feeling like it's zero at the Wilkes Bay Scranton International Airport. And how about Mount Pocono? It's feeling right now like it's minus 12 degrees below zero. And we're going to be dealing with some of those dangerously cold wind chills as we head through tonight and early tomorrow morning. And then the chance of another winter storm that could impact our area as we head into the second part of this upcoming weekend. I'll have the complete seven-day forecast coming up in just a few. The Hazleton Unit of the American Cancer Society presents the 37th Annual Telethon. Give hope. Celebrate life. The American Cancer Society's annual telethon will be held Saturday, February 28th at the Laurel Mall in Hazleton and broadcast live on WILN TV 35 from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Join us for a day filled with great entertainment. Help us celebrate the telethon's 37th year as we raise money for a cure. The American Cancer Society's telethon is made possible by these businesses. S.J. Kowalski is your Mitsubishi Diamond Contractor. They can install a Mitsubishi Electric, Mr. Slim Ductless Heating and Cooling System. Mr. Slim Systems are designed to make any living space in your home inviting. You can have a different temperature control for every room in your home. The money-saving technology can save you 25 to 50 percent on your heating bill. For Mitsubishi, Renai, and trained comfort specialists, call S.J. Kowalski at 570-455-2600. Life has its twists and turns. It can take many different shapes. But a good retirement plan changes with your life. And as we talk about what you're putting away and how much you'll need to retire, what was uncertain becomes clear. At Wells Fargo Advisors, we believe conversation leads to financial clarity. Let's start a conversation today.
Things move a little slower here in DSL bill. Slow pitch softball is big here. Really big. There's not a fast food restaurant in town. Zero. Get the most out of the internet. Get Service Electric High Speed Internet. Call Service Electric today to sign up. Ho, 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 ho. Slow down. Tourists. Join us this week on Women's Today. Linda Santawani from Elson & Company is going to teach you how you can unleash your inner creative diva. We'll have another great wine from Simply Homebrew. A little bit of dragon fruit there. Kathy's going to cook with you. She'll tell you what you can pair with it. We'll have another great giveaway from Linda. We'll tell you who won that great gift from last week. And we'll tell you who our sensational senior is. It's coming up this week on Women's Today. Jay Popson, Frank Eigeldinger, and Matt Bobeck. Once Comets, soon to be Huskies, the trio of local football stars discuss their decision to stick together and what similarities Crestwood and Bloomsburg share. Well, there really wasn't a plan. It kind of came up out of the blue. They just every clean us late. They weren't, like, they weren't there in the beginning, but when we saw the campus, we went there together, and we both really enjoyed it. It was exciting having two of the teammates. Uh, they recruited together. A lot of uh, schools have the same same kids going to bloom, so it'll, it'll be good. Seeing our 2015 recruiting class is very big this year. I think we could definitely make a run for the national championship in Division Two. Probably about like three weeks ago, we were all talking, and we all decided to go to Bloom. They were really interested in us, and we were really interested in them. So that's where all the excitement got into. We uh, decided to all commit to Bloom. Whenever you can jump into a one program and jump into another winning program is a big thing for us. Uh, we're really into winning up here, and we're continuing it. It's a great feeling because I know that I have to have my back through the whole way, and um, I've been there with them forever, so I'm happy to continue that. We just played as hard as we could, and um, we uh, all wanted to go to Bloom eventually, and um, we uh, worked hard at it, and eventually it just happened. We're winning. We're, we like winning here at Crestwood, and I uh, continue that at Bloomsburg. So. Know the pros, the NBA has long been unfamiliar territory for Penn Staters, but former Nittany Lions point guard Tim Frazier will get his shot at the sport's highest level. The 76ers signed Frazier to a 10-day contract after he excelled with the Celtics developmental league team. And former Steelers defensive coordinator Dick LeBeau, now the assistant coach, in charge of defense for the Tennessee Titans. Big night for girls high school hoops, and we have you covered from across the area in the scoreboards. A note from earlier, Holy Redeemer tops Hanover 63 to 40, even missing Alexis Lewis for part of the game. A reminder, Joe Garbacic is next with a look at your upcoming forecast. Let's try talking themselves out of being hurt. I'm good, I'm good. Working past the pain because they want to keep on playing. Okay. I'm good. Coordinated Health understands. As the number one sports medicine team in the region, we get these champions back in the game with pro-level care. Yeah, I'm good. Because we make you better together. Well, I'll never forget it. One minute, we're talking about going to the movies. And the next, Maggie could barely speak. It was a stroke. I thought I was going to lose her. But I never saw doctors work so fast. Anyway, she's coming home tomorrow. I just hope she doesn't yell at me for killing all the plants. <laughs> Changes are coming to WYLN News. More local news at a time more convenient to our viewers. 
and sports stories you won't find anywhere else. Plus, I'll have the seven-day forecast so you are prepared. Still making memories after all these years. Enjoy the great outdoors at the Whitetail Preserve Shooting Ranges Trap Skeet and Sporting Place Course. No waiting and no lines. First time shooting? Whitetail Preserve employs certified instructors to help you get the most out of your experience. Hungry? The restaurant at Whitetail has a great menu to satisfy and offers catering for all occasions. Whitetail Preserve Shooting Range, approximately 13 miles west of Hazelton and just one hour from Allentown, Reading, and the Delaware Water Gap. 118 Boulevard Road, just off the Rockland Road, near Rock Glen, 384-2314. On the next Let's Talk Chiropractic, we're going to talk to Janet. Janet is a CNA who has been in multiple car accidents. Her story and more on Let's Talk Chiropractic only on WYLN TV 35. Right now, we can look forward to better days ahead because solar winter, the northern hemisphere's darkest quarter, started roughly November the 5th through February the 5th. And of course, we had to deal with the winter solstice. We are now creeping out of that. The average temperature start to go up and the amount of daylight starts to go up as well. So spring, even though it's still a ways away, it is still just around the corner. And it'll be here before you know it. Think happy thoughts, if you will, and warm thoughts. Live 35 Skycast Doppler, nothing showing up throughout the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania from Wilkesbury through Scranton, Harrisburg, Williamsport State College, even out through Erie. Nothing showing up. A few flurries at best, but that pretty much is about it. I tell you what, we continue to be in this very cold air, this trough that's building in. It's only 10 degrees now in Boston, 5 degrees in Buffalo, 15 in Minneapolis, 10 degrees in Chicago, and it's only 13 degrees in Dayton, Ohio. Closer to home, 4 degrees in Mount Pocono, 9 degrees, Wilkes-Barre, Scranton International Airport, 4 degrees in Tawanda, 8 in Williamsport, 9 in State College, and it's already down to 1 degree in Bradford. Up in the Wyoming Valley area, from Nanticoke to Wilkes-Barre, Kingston and Lehman, your temperatures already are in the single digits. Satellite and radar, still got some clouds to deal with throughout the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, but don't have to worry about really any precipitation. Just uh, a couple of flurries. That pretty much is about it. No storm systems to talk about as we head through tonight, as we head through tomorrow. Even as we go into our Saturday, uh, things not shaping up to be too bad. But all eyes are on Sunday. Going into Monday, the potential of yet another storm system. We'll see what some of the uh, later models come out as we go through tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon, and tomorrow evening and see how they progress with this storm system. Right now, the bulk of it actually is taking a trip further toward the north and east, which means we would see less precipitation. This time around, we can be looking at snow, we can be looking at some sleet, and even some freezing rain before all is said and done. So we'll be looking at that mixed bag of precipitation as it stands right now, later Sunday, going into Monday. And these cold temperatures stay with us for quite some time. Only 15 degrees for tomorrow, some snow showers for Saturday. And then we'll see what happens as we go into our Sunday and Monday. Could be looking at a wintry mix with temperatures in the 20s and we stay in the 20s heading into next week. So again, tonight it's going to be feeling like temperatures are well below zero. So in the morning, bundle up 
dress in layers, wear the gloves, and always wear a hat when it's this cold. A word of advice from Joe Grandma. Mm -hmm. Joe, go. I don't know if you know this, and I think you might know this, but did you know that today is National Weather Person's <laughs> Day? Oh, so yeah. we just want to wish you a very That's happy right. Weather Person's Day, of course. You are very special, Chief Neal. I don't know what the uh, Clipper system was without you. Actually, I still don't understand. Yeah, I know. It's all right. Uh, that's I want to know if I'm going to have it. Got me by surprise. Doesn't happen Did often, but yeah. Okay, well, I wanted to mention it earlier, but I thought, what's better than a graphic for you to see at the end? We'll see you back here tomorrow night at 5.30. I got an hour to celebrate.